Boutonnier deformity. Boutonnier deformity is mainly used to describe a deformity of the resting finger in which the proximal interphalangeal joint is flexed. You can clearly see here the proximal interphalangeal joint is flexed and the distal interphalangeal joint is hyperextended. This is what is called as boutonnier deformity. So what is the mechanism of such condition? So whenever there is a disruption or avulsion of the central slip extensor tendon and volar migration of the lateral bands of the extensor tendon mechanism results in proximal interphalangeal joint flexion and distal interphalangeal joint extension. So in this image, here we can see the extensor tendon and the central slip which is visible very clearly and which is attached to the base of the middle phalanx. And we can also appreciate the lateral bands which are connected by the triangular ligament and the extensor tendon is inserted at the base of the distal phalanx. All these are pretty much visible very clearly over here. And here you can see the sagittal band, transverse retinacular ligament and also another important ligament called as oblique retinacular ligament. You have to know as well as remember all these structures which are very important for you to understand the mechanism of boutonnier deformity. And the sign derives its name from the appearance of the central tendon slip which was thought to resemble the button hole or boutonnier in French when the turn happens. And the boutonnier deformity is a zone 3 extensor tendon injury. And we already knew that the central tendon slip attaches to the dorsal aspect of the middle phalanx. And what is the main function of it? Its main function is to maintain PIP extension and stabilize the extensor tendon apparatus. If central tendon is disrupted or avulsed, meaning if it gets torn off from the base of the middle phalanx, the lateral bands will slip down to the volar position and the actions of the lateral bands and the flexor digitorum profundus are unopposed, resulting in resting PIP flexion and DIP hyperextension. This is the mechanism behind boutonnier deformity. When we know about the boutonnier deformity, it is also very important for us to know about the Elsen's test. To perform the Elsen's test, it is very important to position the patient's proximal interphalangeal joint in 90 degrees of flexion. This normally keeps the central band out and the lateral bands loose. Ask the patient to extend the proximal interphalangeal joint while the provider's finger applies counter force at the middle phalanx. In the normal Elson's test, it results in active extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint and floppy distal interphalangeal joint. And in the abnormal Elson's test, it results in no active extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint and slightly extended thought distal interphalangeal joint. So this is what we need to know about the Elson's test. And now, what are the conditions which are associated with boutonnier's deformity? Most often, we see in inflammatory arthropathy, example like rheumatoid arthritis. So, maybe because of the panis, you know, you might have heard panis when you have studied about uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Panis is a layer of fibrovascular tissue or granulation tissue in the proximal interphalangeal joint which is most often present in the rheumatoid arthritis that can damage the central slip tendon. So, panis may be one of the cause in the condition of rheumatoid arthritis for the development of boutonnier deformity. And another important condition will be chronic inflammation and synovitis of the joint that may result in persistent proximal interphalangeal joint flexion and the gradual elongation of the central slip tendon which is also mainly seen in rheumatoid arthritis because chronic inflammation is what is evident in rheumatoid arthritis. And because of this, there will be a subsequent volar migration of the lateral bands resulting in a characteristic boutonnier deformity. 
So therefore, Boutonnier's deformity is classically associated with rheumatoid arthritis occurring up to 50% of the patient with this condition. So not only in the inflammatory arthropathy like rheumatoid arthritis, other conditions like traumatic conditions can also cause Boutonnier's deformity. For example, forced flexion of an extended proximal interphalangeal joint, crush injury or penetrating injury may result in avulsion of the central slip tendon. Typically, the degree of deformity increases in the days following the injury. Acutely, the deformity may be subtle. So, this is how, now these are the conditions which are associated with the development of Boutonnier deformity. Now, let us talk about the treatment. Treatment is usually conservative. Splint the finger in extension is what is recommended. And surgical repair is recommended for chronic Boutonnier deformity. Example, that is the repair of the central band, tenotomy and arthrodesis. So, this is what is the recommended treatment for the Boutonnier deformity. Now, we have understood the Boutonnier deformity pretty well, right? Now, here, let us discuss about the differences between Boutonnier deformity and other deformities of the finger. You might have heard about a condition called as mallet finger. So, what happens in the mallet finger? In the mallet's finger, there will be an injury to the extensor digitorum tendon. Remember this point very carefully. There will be a rupture or there will be an injury to the extensor digitorum tendon. And this injury may be caused due to sudden hyperflexion of the distal interphalangeal joint. That is, forced flexion leads to avulsion and rupture of the distal portion of the extensor digitorum tendon from the distal phalanx or may be associated with an avulsion fracture of the distal phalanx. So, therefore, it causes loss of extension of the distal interphalangeal joint. Treatment is usually conservative, splint in extension position and surgical repair for displaced fracture greater than or equal to 45 degrees extension deficit. So, this is what we need to know what exactly is about the mallet finger. And next, another important condition we need to know about is the swan neck deformity. So, swan neck deformity is a finger deformity mainly caused by hyperextension of the proximal interphalangeal joint and flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint. And this condition is commonly seen in the patient with rheumatoid arthritis that affects the fingers. Can also occur after flexor digitorum superficialis laceration or surgical repair of the finger flexor tendon injuries that is by the tight repair of the flexor digitorum profundus. So, this condition may cause swan neck deformity. Right? So, this is what we need to know what exactly is about Boutonnier deformity, mallet's finger as well as swanic deformity.